G'day gang, Simo and Ed. And this week, we're talking about why your cart track should be the most prolific cake seller in the whole of the town. Absolutely we are. So, you're watching Simo and Ed and the Fastline Cart Track Grace Show, where we talk all things carting and business. Cakes, are you insane? <laughs> That is pretty much the response you gave me when I wrote a few little notes up just before I walked through the door, didn't we? It's true though. What I got thinking about the other day was the personal touch has gone from the way we buy things. Mm. Back in the day, you'd go out to a shop or somewhere and there'd be somebody that you'd get on really well with and you'd have your favourite shop assistant and you'd walk in there, they know your name, they say hello, they look after you and it'd be a very different buying experience. And then all of a sudden roll forward, and I don't quite know when it happened, but the last few years, I mean, I haven't met any of the people that I'm buying from recently, like Amazon do a lot for me. Mm. And the bits and pieces, there's all these other stuff coming in. COVID has helped a bit to do this. It has. Because it, it, COVID has forced, has, has well, th three months forms a habit, and we're all locked down for three months. Yeah, yeah. And you couldn't get shit. You yeah, couldn't yeah. go down the store and get stuff. So what do you do? Jump on Amazon. Yeah, yeah. And you just go onto all the apps yep. online and just start buying stuff. And lots of my friends don't go shopping for food anymore. Mm. It gets delivered to them in boxes. So, like, the personal touch has mm. gone. And the, the carting world as well will have suffered. They won't necessarily feel it, but the buying, the way people buy stuff has changed. So they're used to different stuff happening. So then all well, most of it's being bought online now. Yeah, yeah. So they're used to that's their buying yeah. pattern now, and yeah. all of a sudden you've got to interact yeah. down at a go kart track. You, you, you buy on, you buy your sessions online. You don't, you, you know, you don't ring up and have a chat about the carts and things like that. Yeah, yeah. get into conversation. Now that causes problems because you've done all yeah. the money. We've spoke about it in the past where you spent mm. all the money on marketing and everything to go and get somebody down at your track and mm. done all the good stuff, right? Mm. And most companies will stop there. So most kart tracks will go job done, stand mm. back. But actually, the real gold in your go-kart track is the upsell, mm. right? So, now the problem with that is the timing can be difficult to manage. And also, you, you've got to work out what is like useful to them. Mm. That timing bit to start with, it's like, when do you start the upsell? Yeah, I think, we've talked about this before, or mm. I certainly have. One of, the, one of the first problems we have mm -hmm. is there are a lot of go-kart tracks that uh, that have got this mental block to charging anything more. Yeah, yeah. They think that you, you can't charge anything more. It just, you know, they're just not going to come. Well, there's typically a there's a fear, isn't there, that they might lose customers? Yeah, yeah. And that is just crazy. Yeah. And and the fact of the matter is, yeah. especially if it's online booking, they've paid for that cart ride two weeks ago. Yeah, yeah. The money's gone. They've forgotten about that yeah. spend. Yeah, yeah. By the time they get there, they've forgotten about that spend. And the, well, and the other problem is, is if I turn up, so this particularly around balaclavas, gloves, stuff like that, that, mm. that you can upsell on. There'll be other things mm. that you can upsell on, but mm. let's just deal with those yeah. two. If I've got two tracks and they're within 10 miles of each other, one I turn up and they just keep really quiet because they're worried that they're going to lose me. Mm. Right, and I go and have a great time, but you know, and I leave, and that's mm. it. And there's another one down the road where I go and turn up, and they go, We can make you feel like a racing driver, put the gloves on, put the balaclava on, mm. and it's only going to cost you, and I can't what these things cost, but it's peanuts, it's like four or five pounds. It's, it's, it's probably a five for both five of those, of the, you, you know. So, for maybe five pounds extra, I get a very different experience. Mm. Which one do you think I'm going to go back to? That's it. You've got to sort of first of all work out a little bit about what, what they want, but equally the timing of when you do that. So I'm not so sure it's the fear of losing that. Well, the fear of losing mm. customers is a very real one, mm. preventing people. But if you get the timing right with the right offer, mm. jobs are good. And, and it'll, it'll, depend, it'll depend on the market too. Yeah, yeah. Because you you know, uh, for example, birthday parties. Mm -hmm. If you want to sell them party bags or birthday cakes, yeah. you can't do that when they turn up. That's right. That's that that's that ship has sailed. Takes a bit of you know, um, forward planning, yeah, that does. You you need to tap away at them the weeks, months leading up to it. Now I mean P and O Cruises is really good at this. Yeah, yeah. I mean we haven't used them for years. Yeah. But the last time we um we had a holiday in, in France. Yeah. We booked on the P and O cruise. Yeah. And I got every week 
so three weeks running before we left, yeah. every week got an email. Oh, cool. There you go. Do you want your Euros? Yeah. Book, book your Euros, pick them up on the boat. Do you want your duty free? <laughs> do you want Wi-Fi on, on the boat, prepay it, or do you want to upgrade to the captain's club? Cool. I love that. We got the Euro. Mm-hmm. We got the Wi-Fi. Yep. And because I'd had an exceptionally good week the week before, guess what? <laughs> Captain's Club. Correct. Now, see, I mean, that's really cool. And if they hadn't have done that, I yeah. wouldn't have thought, hey, let's get Euros on the, on, on the, on the boat across. We would have organised that before yeah. we left. See, what's interesting to me about that the most is that everything you've just described there is an increased spend. So this brings mm. me on to the next point around what do you offer? Because the first thing you need to work out is the purpose of your offer. Mm. So the first one, when I talked about the go-kart track, that's about experience. Mm. It cost me five pounds to feel like a racing driver, mm. right? So I'm going to go for that experience. Where you've just talked about P&O there, I'm sure they've got other offers potentially, mm. but they might be just the ones you remembered, but all those were around increasing spend. Mm. But you want to work out what the purpose is. Is it to increase mm. spend? Is it to uh, get customer loyalty? Yeah. Is it all about getting repeat purchases? Um, so what is the offer going to do for your customer and what is it going to do for you? So that will help determine what type of offer will really apply to the customer when they turn up. And you can have more than one offer going on at one time. So you could be increasing spend per head and trying to get repeat customers. Yeah, if, the, if it's the right offer. Yeah. So as a golden rule in marketing, the less to be broken, but mm. careful how you break rules. Mm. Uh, one offer at a time. Oh, yeah. Yeah, but what you offer might do more than one thing. So mm. the people that do this really, really well in the UK, a company called Tesco. You may have heard of them. Small little shopping outfit. Yeah. Top, I've got a couple of stores in the UK. <laughs> top three supermarket, yeah. I think they are. Yeah. Possibly top mm. two in the UK, uh, Tesco. And what they've got is they've got Tesco Club Card. And this is like a loyalty card scheme. The stats for supermarkets in the UK, where they sort of make offers and bits and pieces to shoppers normally, it increases spend something like 1% to 2%. 2% yeah. Whereas the Tesco Club Card, mysteriously, it regularly achieves 8 to 14% across the board, across all demographics that are shopping their store. It's amazing. Though. But there, I mean, a lot, of these, a lot of these cards that are collecting this information... Mm -hmm are not using it correctly. But yeah. those guys do, don't they? Yeah, they they got copious amounts of data and, and you'll all have data, whether it's mm. written down or in the heads mm. of the people that work with you or in your own head at the go-kart track. Mm. But the difference is that they really make good use of it. Mm. So the one place that I was reading about where they really use this well mm. is for um, fathers buying nappies, diapers, diapers. if you're in America yeah. Yeah, or <laughs> somewhere else, but nappies or diapers for their kids. Right, and they worked out that those fathers spend more on beer because they know they're not going to the pub as often because they've got a newborn child in the house. So what they do is they target um, lower priced beer offers for club card holders and their beer sales rocket for new fathers. So they're really good at understanding. So the first key thing is understand and know your customer at a very, very deep level. But, but they go further than that, don't they? Because they know that quite often it's mm. Thursday is the day yeah, yeah. that they've got to run out and get these nappies or diapers. Yeah, yeah. So therefore, Thursday morning or, or Wednesday, yeah, yeah. the um, father gets an email yeah, that's right. with an offer for beer. That's it, because they know there's a high likelihood he's going to go and need uh, to deal with the Poon army back at home because something's happened and they've run out of the, and they know this household always does <coughs> that and that is on a Thursday typically. And, and don't they usually put the beer on the gondola ends? Oh, they could do. I don't know. The don't don't, know. Simon Lennon shop at Tesco. <laughs> um, but uh, they probably, I mean, that'd be a really mm. smart move for them. Mm. But that sort of brings us into the, the context of when people purchase. Mm. So timing is a real important factor. Now, if you're at a go-kart track, the timing might be as simple as, at what point am I going to offer them a balaclava when they come through the door? Right? You've got to get that, that context right. Now, if you're an outdoor track, weather could have a massive impact. Mm. Good and bad. You think rain would be bad, but actually mm. some people... Some people love going oh, out in the rain. I would love to feel like the back end mm. of the cart sliding around as mm. I go around the bend. The, the mechanics and the, the track mm. owner may not enjoy mm. that. But equally, like even those indoor tracks, I've been in them, 
uh, particularly on the electric carts, and you go in uh, sort of in like December, January, mm. winter for uh, for our location in the hemisphere. Mm. And as you're going along, the freezing cold air in your hands it is biting. Mm. <laughs> so weather will have a massive impact. Mm. And then who's buying? Now, if you get your offering mm. right, so this is the third thing: know what you're offering them and, uh, and base it on who your customer is and the, the purchase context. Mm. You then got to get the right offer, which is why we say. A track really wants to be the most prolific cake seller in the world yeah. because your offer for selling birthday cakes, for example, has to go to the mother. Yeah, if somebody walks in and there's a birthday happening, mm. it might be the kids' party. It could very easily be an older, you know, sort mm. of teens. It could be any age group. Mm. They, it's just their birthday. As somebody walks through the door, and you know your customer, you go, "It's your birthday." So you've got to, well, how do you find out? You've got to get that question in there. What are you celebrating? Are you celebrating anything today? Yeah, it's uh, Simo's birthday. Didn't know it was your birthday. Hey, we've got a fantastic offer on for, for cake uh, and also champagne. Mm. Do you want to go and like spray down with champagne on the podium? Do you want to buy a bottle to go and take home? I don't know how many bottles of champagne you sell down at the track, but you could be the most prolific champagne seller in the local town. Mm. You definitely want to be the biggest cake seller because the uh, not many of the kids will, uh, well, the kids will have a champagne wash <laughs> hand. The parents may have a, a few, uh, like a different take on that. You can you can get non-alcoholic version of the of the champagne. I'm not going there. No. <laughs> What's too, the point? It's, um, it's, well, it's fraught with danger, isn't mm. that one? But equally, mm. that's coming down to know your customer. Mm. So you might go, actually, little Johnny's mum ain't going to be pleased even if it is uh, yeah. no secco, is it? The alcohol-free Prosecco, yeah, doesn't it? Like no secco, oh, what's all that about? Oh. So this is why you need to be the most prolific cake mm. seller on, in your local town by just understanding your customer and understanding what offers and the context of what you're going to offer them to get your upsells on. Chocolate for me, please. Yeah. <laughs> what cake do you want? <laughs> oh, I, I like the um, the uh, red velvet one. Honestly, we're not, mm. we're not friends any longer. <laughs> <laughs> right. I hope you got loads from that. It's goodbye from me, and it's goodbye from him, Cheerio. and we'll see you next week. Bye now. Cheers.